live performance setting or even for installations or for reactive pieces which are not directly interactive um, processing is a good way into uh, super collider and to hook those two very powerful uh, tools together is basically the idea of this workshop today car door is still open Start processing at 17B. Um, yeah, please save both. Yes. And blue. This is cracking sound. That's the third one coming in. So valve one, valve two, valve three. And if you are, you know, quick enough, and draw something nice and crazy, red, green, and blue. Uh, and then we send those three things to a, a, another synth definition um, we do, but basically we arrived where we wanted to. We combined a drawing tool with the actual synth definition, which is also very simple. You know, if I um, if I look to you and sort of motion for sound, right? Um, make sound, uh, you know, or don't make sound, okay. or you know, over here, uh, or everyone, right? <laughs> um, I'm not so sure we can really do. Um, you know, you can sort of shield the speakers a little bit if you want to change the volume. Um, so maybe we can start. Uh, I, I'm not sure where everyone is, but.
And so one way is this very social space of a theater where surround is mocked up, having many speakers. I counted them up, there are 18 speakers. This would be like a 14.1 uh, 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 setup instead of a 5.1. But you see, it's still social. There are five people in the audience. There are a number of you in the audience today. And so I want to contrast that with the 5.1 image where you have this gentleman very much, uh, someone was talking about the Maxell commercial with the guy in the armchair with, the, you know, so real it hurts kind of feeling. You know, you get that sense of this lone experience contrasting that to the social experience of being together in shared space. Bouncing, expanding light balls would pulsate with the music, broken up as in equalizer settings to different parts of the sound spectrum. And so this cartoon experience became part of interpolating or interpreting the sound, of coming to understand and appreciate the music in a new way. And the sound is and the light sound for Drake, Buffalo. Hearing the word is not the same as hearing the animal. And hearing the name of the animal is not the same as hearing the animal. These ten drums of sound, echoing through one's text and in our readings, represent the layers of interpretation separating us from the visceral experience, as I am limited in this presentation to describing the hair raising. We yesterday saw like the Arduino stuff is like exactly the same or less, like with more pins and it's, uh, I am working with wiring because one friend of mine designed it and we're like close friends and I decided to work like with wiring in general. And with some potentiometers uh, you will see how it works and uh, there are like new components for the project for one performance that I will do this week in UCSB, like uh, things like GPS, like that's also a piece of high tech, like come on, it's like the cheapest GPS that you can find it like Amazon. And uh, this patch is like very interesting because it was de developed to read exactly like every single port in the, in the input output port, okay? Uh, I'm interested in open sound control. This is like a one simple patch that will receive information for instance in another computer, right? So open sound control is a protocol for, it was developed in, in Berkeley, I guess. No, I'm pretty sure in Berkeley and they were like kind of tired of MIDI protocol because it's quite limited and simple, and they developed something that's like quite simple and it works like pretty well. But right now it's not used only for sound, but like all over the place, like when you need to communicate things, even like through networks like around the globe, like sending, doing a streaming, but not of only like video or audio, but also like data that can be interpreted as data in another place, right? So it like allows to create like a net networks of interaction. From this bicycle, there's the wiring, the, la the laptop and the speakers, and there's the, uh, the other one that is connected to this one. Changing information, it can be sent in both ways, and also with the speakers, and um, okay, sharing like open sound control and UDP data, right? It was at night, like, it was very interesting. So this is one bicycle, right? So going to here, and th there's the first one. And I'm changing some parameters, like, so now there's no sound here. And the idea is like confront myself, right, with this device in such like a fast experience where like uh, the, the movement of body, the movement of bicycle matters a lot. Ex 
exactly. And the, the, the public were outside of the building, like listening to that, like with the acoustic conditions of, of the building, like moving around. Maybe with the room? Why? Because it contains some wood. Then you should start with a description of shoes, hands, and eyes. I know these are your favorites. So we're sending this out to the DAC, but what we want to do is sort of control it with the keyboard. Um, and uh, so we're going to use this key in object, or key object, and that's going to take a value in from the keyboard. Um, and then we're going to use that to control um, uh, a simple envelope, which is sort of what's happening here. There you go. Uh, and then I'm sending those into basically uh, my uh, these different uh, uh, little drum patches that I've made. <laughs> I am very interested on the relationship on arts and technology in Latin America, and it's like one example that comes from there, right? So it's like about Com da Suar. Com da Suar, it's like um, the text is based on an interview with Jose Vicente Azuar. Jose Vicente Azuar is that guy, and in March and February, he was um, really kind and offered me like uh, two interviews using Skype. That is like a kind of painful process sometimes. He got like a square signal, and then he processed it like uh, with analog, um, analog um, systems to generate like nice sounds, like the timer. Yeah, in order to give uh, some context, like um, at the time there is no personal computer yet, right? And, um, and there is no such a thing as, can, as, as far as I can understand, like a computer dedicated exclusively for sound. In fact, like compositions that can be considered like a algorithmic composition, right? He made like a couple of things, in instructions, and then the process after that, like the, the, the music after that, was generated by the computer. The simple laws, and he called it heuristic composition. <laughs> 